Military snipers almost never aim for the head, and if you think it's because they're being merciful, you're dead wrong. I'm gonna tell you exactly why Hollywood has been lying to you about sniper tactics for decades. We'll cover why military snipers deliberately avoid headshots, what they actually aim for instead, and how this completely changes everything you thought you knew about long-range warfare. Plus, I'll show you the insane physics that make headshots basically impossible at the distances these guys are actually shooting from. Here's something that'll blow your mind about sniper physics. Picture this. You're a sniper lying in some godforsaken field trying to hit a target that's over 330 yards away, and that's considered a short shot from military snipers. At that distance, a human head is roughly the size of a golf ball through your scope. Now add in the fact that heads move constantly. People turn, nod, look around, and you've got a target that's not just tiny, but unpredictable as hell. But here's where it gets really interesting. At long range, even your own heartbeat affects your shot accuracy. Military snipers have to time their trigger pull between heartbeats because that slight movement of blood through your body is enough to throw off a precision shot. Now imagine trying to hit a golf ball sized target that's also moving while you're dealing with your own biological limitations. The math is brutal. If you're off by just a few inches at 330 yards, you completely miss. But if you're aiming at center mass, the upper chest area, you've got a target that's roughly the size of a dinner plate, and even if you're off by those same few inches, you're still hitting vital organs. That's why military snipers aim for center mass. It's not about being less lethal, it's about being more effective. But the tiny target size is just the beginning of why headshots are basically impossible. Let me tell you about the environmental factors that make precision headshots a fantasy. First up, wind. Crosswind is the biggest enemy of sniper accuracy, and it affects your bullet's path the entire time it's flying toward the target. Your spotter might measure wind speed at your position, but the wind could be completely different halfway to the target. Here's where it gets wild. Gravity isn't even the worst part. The Earth's actual rotation affects bullet trajectory through something called the Coriolis effect. When you fire a bullet, the Earth literally moves away from underneath it. If you're shooting west, your shots hit lower than expected. Shooting east, your shots hit higher. It's like trying to hit a moving target while you're on a spinning carousel. And then there's temperature, humidity, altitude, and about a dozen other factors that all compound at long range. A Ukrainian sniper recently broke the world record with a shot at 2.3 miles. That's more than twice the length of the Brooklyn Bridge. The bullet traveled for 9 seconds, giving all these environmental factors plenty of time to screw with your shot. At those distances, aiming for a head is like trying to thread a needle while riding a roller coaster in a hurricane. Now here's the part that movies completely get wrong about what snipers actually do. Everyone thinks snipers just lie around taking precision shots all day, but here's the truth. Shooting makes up maybe 10% of a sniper's job. The other 90% is reconnaissance, watching, gathering intelligence, and reporting enemy movements. When a sniper does take a shot, it's usually to eliminate a high-value target that poses an immediate threat to their unit. In that situation, you absolutely cannot afford to miss. A missed shot doesn't just mean you failed to eliminate the threat, it means you've now revealed your position to everyone within miles. Remember, a spotted sniper is usually a dead sniper. So when you finally do take that shot, it has to count. This is why military snipers train differently than police snipers. Police snipers often work from much closer distances, sometimes under 100 yards, and they might deliberately aim for the head to instantly stop a threat who's holding a hostage. They've got one target, a controlled environment, and backup units surrounding the area. Military snipers, they're operating alone, hundreds or thousands of yards from their target in hostile territory where missing means death. But there's an even darker reason why military snipers avoid headshots. The psychological impact of snipers isn't just about taking out individual targets. It's about creating constant fear and paranoia in enemy forces. Snipers have a similar psychological effect to landmines. They're an invisible, constant threat that makes everyone afraid to move. When enemy forces know there's a sniper in the area, they become paralyzed. Officers remove their rank insignia so they can't be identified as high-value targets. Soldiers avoid gathering in groups. Normal military operations grind to a halt because everyone's looking over their shoulder. This psychological warfare is incredibly effective, but it only works if the sniper remains hidden and continues to be a threat. 
miss a shot because you were trying to be fancy with a headshot, now everyone knows where you are and your psychological advantage is gone forever. The most effective snipers understand that their greatest weapon isn't their rifle, it's fear. And you can't spread fear if you're dead because you missed a difficult shot. And here's the final reason why headshots are basically suicide for military snipers. Modern warfare has made snipers' jobs exponentially harder. Drones equipped with thermal cameras can spot snipers even when they're perfectly camouflaged because they can detect body heat. Counter sniper teams are constantly scanning for muzzle flashes and acoustic signatures. Advanced ballistic computers can triangulate your position from a single shot. In this environment, you get one shot before you have to move or risk being eliminated. That shot has to count, and it has to be the most reliable shot possible. Taking a risky headshot when you could guarantee a kill with center mass isn't tactical thinking, it's ego, and ego gets you killed in combat. Plus, if you're captured as a sniper, you're more likely to be mistreated than regular soldiers because the enemy sees you as fighting unfairly. Snipers caught in dangerous situations often ditch their ghillie suits and rifles to try to blend in with regular infantry for exactly this reason. In modern warfare, the sniper who survives longest is the one who makes the most reliable shots, not the most impressive ones. So there you have it. Military snipers avoid headshots because they're professionals, not show-offs. They understand that center mass shots are more reliable, more effective, and more likely to keep them alive long enough to complete their mission. But speaking of precision weapons that keep soldiers alive, you need to see this video where you'll discover why the US military is developing explosive computers that turn every soldier into a walking artillery piece. Weapons that make traditional sniping look almost primitive by comparison.